Hey you guys, this is Mindy and uh, welcome to the 70s mod, you know, kind of vibe we got going on here. Um, I did want you to see what I've gotten done so far. I've gotten the grass, her little carpet, rug she's sitting on. I did do part of her blue jeans up here, her knee. I played with this silly, silly peace sign patch on her knee for two hours, you guys, two hours. I have something underneath here, so I'm going to move it now. But, um, yeah, the patch. Two hours on that patch. I didn't want it to be green. I tried to do all sparklers in it, and that didn't work. They just blended together, and I was like, oh, I just played with it and played with it. So there's a couple, like, little uh, sunshine sparklers in there just to give it a little bling. There's a couple of ABs, and I changed the peace sign to purple. The hard thing is it's round, and it's not making a real round good peace sign so it's a little tricky anyhow I've gotten the drum part done here this I just did straight no ABs nothing um, this is glow glass there's some ABs in here but yeah blinging it up as much as I can so I'm gonna work on this part over here by the grass I'm gonna uh, zoom you in here turn you a little bit now so you can see the grass I'm working in. I am currently working on a section where I'm throwing in ABs. Um, the color that's in already did not come in an AB. Sorry for the noise. But um, this color does. So this is what I've done. This is seven or 907. I've just taken my, I've taken my ABs and I've just dumped them in here. They're just mixed in. They're just mixed in. There's A, B, and regular drills in here. So I'll go through and I'll pick up probably one A, B, and three regulars at a time and just start putting them in. Yeah, that's how I do it. When I just mix, like I did over here on the um, little rug she's sitting on, her blankie. Just throw in one A, B at a time with three regulars and we roll. That's how we go. See? So there's that A, B at the bottom. That's A, B, three regular. Then I just, you know, randomly put them in that way. It's how I do it. And it works. I just try to make sure that none of the A, Bs are next to each other. Well, there's an A, B here, and then there's one down here. So they're, you know, a good ways apart. I'll probably put one up here. Sometimes I just grab one randomly and just put it where I want it, like that. Right? So, yeah, that's how I go with it. And uh, it just adds that little sparkle along the way as you go. And this will not pick up because I just put that AB in there and it took my fresh wax right out. It sure did. I'm using white wax. It took it right out of that end because it was fresh. You know, ABs don't like fresh wax. No matter what kind of wax you use, I don't think they like fresh wax. So I always take it and kind of, you know, rub it on my pants, kind of muddy it up a little bit get some lint on it <laughs> which sounds weird we want our wax to be good and sticky but <clears throat> when it comes to um doing ab's we want it dirty where is my voice going why does this do this every time i start hang on <clears throat> i am so sorry All right, <clears throat> let's try that. Last couple times I've started chatting, I just, my voice has just gone on me. I don't know what the deal is. Anyhow, maybe it'll be under control now. Be under control. All right. So this, okay, that was an AB. See, it did it again. Dang it all. <laughs> all right. Holy guacamole, right? Hey, guacamole. It's May 5th. Happy Cinco de Mayo. <laughs> yeah, that just dawned on me. It is Cinco de Mayo. I get to have a little Zoom class with my kids today. We'll probably talk a little bit about Cinco de Mayo because, you know, it is May 5th, right? All right. So a couple things before I start talking 70s here because we'll get to that in a second. Um, let me just say my weekend was extremely productive, got lots of things done, building my 
flower garden out back. That's an AB. I'm going to be very careful with it. There we go. Be gentle. <laughs> um, and uh, yeah, got lots, lots of things done. The weather was absolutely beautiful around here. It was 70s all weekend. It was fantastic. That doesn't happen very often for us. So we took advantage of it. Absolutely took advantage of it. Got lots of things done. Um, if you were not in my live on Saturday, I talked about a little problem I had on the farm here. Went out one night to get the ducks out of the pond, glanced out to see where they were, see if they were out of the pond. It's much easier to get them to come in if they're out of the pond, right? <laughs> Looked out and right here by my back door, trucking across was a fox. I did it again, you guys. Jeez. Did it again. Oh, God. Okay. Um, a fox. A fox trucking right through my little backyard. You, I mean, right through here. It was crazy. I'm hollering and I'm like, the hell, the hell, <laughs> there's a fox. And I'm running out the door and the ducks were right down at the water's edge, and I know that's where that box was headed, of course, right? Yeah, so I went just yelling out the door, just screaming out the door, you know, and I don't know where the fox went, but clearly, clearly I scared it off. So luckily, luckily it did not have a meal of a duck for the evening. <laughs> But, oh my goodness, why is there a fox cruising in my backyard? I was like, no. Oh. Anyhow, making a little more friends with Rowdy. I'm feeding him. That's what I'm doing. I'm feeding Rowdy. <laughs> I think that's going to be my way to get to his heart. See what a good person I am? I give you things. I give you special treats because we feed them mealworms and things like that. But see how good I am to you? You must like me now. Yes, you must like me. <laughs> so there's that. Um, a couple other things I wanted to talk about real quick is I want to say thank you. Just thank you to the two people who nominated me for Diamond Painter of the Month. <laughs> I was touched. I was so moved by that. No idea who it was, but I just want to say I greatly appreciate it. And I'll tell you why it's so special. And it's because I've been feeling a little down lately. Just down. Just, you know, I don't know if it's just work, retiring, the whole situation. Everything's just been kind of getting to me, including like YouTube. And I don't know. It was just nice to hear some people shouted out my name to you know the diamond painter of the month you know thing and it was just thank you whoever that was thank you thank you thank you i appreciate that so much so much more than you probably even know it just came at a perfect time and boosted my spirits oh i can't do four there sorry there's some ease there <laughs> can't put those there so thank you thank you thank you for that um I did mention in my live a little bit, but I haven't said it anywhere else publicly. I'm working on setting up memberships. I was notified that I qualify, that I can have members on my channel. And I'm not going to talk about it a lot here because the point is to work on this project and talk more about this. But I will just say very quickly, I am working on it and I'm going to just try it. It's a way that people can contribute to my channel a little bit a month. I mean, just like $2 or $5. And by doing that, you get special privileges, special things, you know? So I'm, I'm working on that. I'm going to see if there's any interest in that. Um, you know, guys, I'm not out here to make a million dollars. That's not the point. It really isn't. It never, never was, never will be. It's just having the channel resources to support buying things to show is my goal. 
I always said if I made enough money on YouTube to buy one painting to show people, that would be awesome. <laughs> I still stick with that. I still, you know, I still say that's true. And that's all I'm really trying to do. Just have enough funds from YouTube to to show cool things. Because you guys like to see the cool things I find and share. And that's all I'm trying to do. So enough of that. But, you know, stay tuned for that because... I'm working on it. I got my tiers figured out and some special things to go with them. So, yeah, that's going to be coming out. And it's just tr it's just a trial. You guys, it's just a trial. Um, I don't know if it's something that's going to stick around, if people are going to be interested in it or not. I'm just going to try it. I always got to try something a little new and different, right? Got to try keeping it fresh. Anyhow. Enough about that. Uh, this is like five weeks of school left, including this week. And it's already Tuesday. So we're getting there. Officially, officially put in all my retirement paperwork and things like that. No turning back now. Well, I suppose you still could turn back. But with everything that's going on and the uncertainty even of what next year's going to hold, I'm just like, no. No, I just got to do it. You know, somebody asked me, because, you know, it's going to be a financial, it's going to be a financial crunch for sure um, when I retire. And they asked me, well, why are you doing it then? <laughs> Jeez, you guys cannot keep the wax in this pen from this. It's crazy. Um, I'm like, it's just, I can't do this anymore. I can't do this job anymore. I just, it's gotten too, it's hard. It's just hard. And I'm, you know, especially with next year, the things I'm hearing that may happen next year, I, I don't want to do that. I don't want to deal with that stuff. I mean, it's just going to be, make it even harder, you know. So I'm just going to deal with things the way they are. See where the chips land. <laughs> so anyhow, there's that. Enough of all of that. I think that's all the main things I wanted to talk to you about, catch you up on. So, Melody, she is so much fun to work on. I think that Kira, the principal painter, and Maritza, Kiss My Crafts, are going just gangbusters on this painting. I think they're going to just cruise right past me. I do. <laughs> um, I don't know that for sure, but man, they're like constantly working on it. And I'm like, you guys are just going to blow right past me. <laughs> um, Kara's like, I have to work on it a lot on the weekends because you ladies, you're just going to, you're going to cruise right by me. And I'm thinking, no, I don't, no, I don't think so. <laughs> I think you guys have diamond painted a whole lot this weekend. And when the weekends come, I don't. Not I mean, not that much. Because my husband's home on the weekends. And that's when we do things. That's when we get a lot of work done around here is on the weekends. Because that's when he's home. You know, during the week, he's not here. So I guess my goal is to catch up to them. <laughs> Um, the weekdays, because that's when I can do my work. <laughs> so that's what I'm trying to do today. Get a lot done while I chit-chat. So when I did the intro, I talked a little bit about where I grew up. Grew up in a little neighborhood. It was really a block. I mean, one, not square, but rectangular block. It was a long, you know, two long parallel roads and two short ones, so it made a long rectangle. Um, but there weren't a lot of people, a lot of houses there, but enough, you know. It's where I grew up. It's the place that I remembered from birth till about, I was about 12 or 13, I think. Um, and it was a great place to grow up. I have excellent, excellent memories of living there. I did mention my friend that turned into my cousin later in life. Um, she was my, my good friend that lived in the neighborhood that I hung out with all the time. And then her older cousins, her cousins that lived across the street a ways, 
That's who we hung out with all the time. I mean, it was Sue and Cheryl, and she had brothers, Tim, and gosh, what was the other brother's name? I can't remember now. There are two older brothers. Tim was a cutie, but, you know, he was off limits because he was almost like my cousin because, you know, he was my friend's cousin, so, <laughs> and he was older. But there was also uh, the boys down the street. Yes, the boys down the street, and boy, did I have a crush on one of them. I remember that, and the girls, you know, the girls knew that. My two girl friends, they knew that. They knew I had a crush on him. I was bad, mad crush. It was crazy. <laughs> um, but he was a cutie, you know. I mean, it was just a crush. That's all it was, totally all it was. But, you know, any time that he was around, I was just like, you know, that bumbling idiot kind of person, you know. Um, we all did hang out together quite a bit, but yeah, that the good old days, right? Good old days. Um, we hung out at the cousin's house quite a bit across the street from me, around the corner from her, all right? <laughs> we hung out there quite a bit, and they were older. I mean, Sue was one to two years older than me. Um, Cheryl was older than that. The boys, one of the boys was much older, like several years older. Um, and we just kind of hung out there. Here's some of the things I remember hanging out at their house. <laughs> um, the boys were always downstairs in the basement. And it was, it was like a, oh, what do I want to say? It was totally like a little hippie room totally hippie room you know like it was dark and had curtains and had posters and black lights Do you remember black lights yeah it was all like that in this basement and that's where um i think that's where their bedrooms were the boys were down in the basement they played guitar somebody played guitar and so they were playing guitar all the time in the basement and playing music. Ah, oh, the music. Oh my goodness, the music I remember, you guys. It was rock. I mean, it was the hard, harder rock, like Black Sabbath, you know, and things like that. Um, that's the music I remember in the basement. And we would just hang out. Now, I'm sure there was some stuff going on there probably that, you know, I didn't know about. <laughs> <laughs> because I was the young kid. And when I was there, I think, you know, everybody behaved pretty well because I was there. I was the youngest. But, um, yeah, it was just, it was wild, right? Wild. Um, the music, the music I remember is nothing I ever listened to. I was not into all of that hardcore rock and stuff like that. Black Sabbath and Rolling Stones. Rolling Stones aren't as hardcore, but... You know what I mean. All the real rock stuff. Um, I was more into the bubblegum rock, I guess you'll call it. <laughs> I was a bubblegum rocker. <laughs> but that's what I remember. Um, I remember lots of 70s clothes and tie-dyed things. Even the boys. Even the boys wore kind of like tie-dyed stuff. And, you know, um, they had longer hair all that stuff. Yeah. <laughs> so um, their family, I don't think, was, you know, financially really well off. I'll just put it that way. Um, and I remember that they were always doing things on the, the, the cheap end of life, you know, like economical things. I remember going to their house, and this is funny. I don't know why I remember this one, but I do. We would go over there and they'd be making a snack. Okay? And their favorite snack to make, and I ate it many times. I, you know, they'd share. I had it many times. They would make macaroni. Just elbow macaroni. Cook it, right? And they would mix in the elbow macaroni sugar and butter. That was it. <laughs> sugar and butter in the cooked macaroni. I mean, it sounds 
weird to some people. It sounds gross. I mean, all this, I know, but it was actually, it was actually really good. <laughs> it actually was really good. And, you know, very easy to make. The kids could make it on their own without parents' help, you know, and whatnot. Of course, they're older, too. You know, i got to remember, they're older than they're older than me. But, and it didn't cost hardly anything, you know? Pretty inexpensive little lunch meal snack type thing there. So here we are, eating macaroni with sugar and butter, listening to Black Sabbath, and I'm sure there's some other bands I didn't even know who they were at the time. So I couldn't tell you who they are, but the hard rock stuff. Interesting, huh? Very interesting. It was definitely a different time of life. <laughs> definitely. <laughs> like I said, there was probably some, you know, you know what people did in the 70s. I'm sure there was some of that going on and I just didn't know about it. <laughs> they kept it from me. So that was nice of them, right? was nice of them. <laughs> of course, they probably knew that if my parents ever found out anything like that happened with me around, that my parents would have killed them, you know, <laughs> not literally. <laughs> but I'm certain they would have marched right over there and had words to say with everybody. So <laughs> anyhow, it was a different time. I And the, the whole daisy chain, you guys, I said daisy chains. I mean, dandelion chains is what they were, really. But we actually made those, like, Often we made those. Often. Yeah. So, yeah, good times. And then we moved, you know, in spite of my best efforts, taking the sign out of the yard and things like that, we moved. We moved to the country. We only moved about oh, maybe three miles from there. You would have thought I'd moved to the other side of the country. Really, you would have thought I'd moved to the, to the entire side of the country, and we moved about three miles away. Um, those were my friends. Those were my people. My crush. My crush was there. Oh, that was probably one of the big things. I didn't want to leave my crush, you know. <laughs> he was a cutie. So cute. <laughs> um, but we moved. And when we moved out to the country, my parents bought 13 and a half acres, right? 13 and a half acres. I remember almost immediately upon moving in there, some of the neighbor kids coming down. The dirtiest, muddiest, grungiest little kids you'd ever seen in your life come down. Hi, we're the neighbors. We live like two houses down the street, you know? And we're like, oh, okay, hi, you know? And they were younger than me, quite a bit younger than me. And I really, you know, they they were not anybody that I was going to hang out with, for sure. Now, my brother, my brother became good friends with one of those kids. Um, and my sister became good friends with one of the girls that lived across the street from them. You know, when you live out in the country and you live in these mile-long blocks, there's not a whole lot of houses. I said I was going to count. I never did. There was like four, and then us, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. There was less than, less than 15 houses on the road, all the way in the, mile, the whole mile, less than 15. So not a lot, not a lot of people. <laughs> and there were some kids, but like I said, the kids were all younger than me. Well, there was one. One family had three girls. There was one that was my age, one that was my sister's age, and one that I think was in between, in between those two girls. But the, the one that was my age was definitely not my type. Definitely not my type of friend. So I was going off to junior high, right? Junior high, big old junior high, you know? Um, from elementary school. We moved right between my elementary, which sixth grade was my elementary. We had elementary up through sixth. And then I was going into seventh, which was junior high. There's something in here, a string or something. A hair, a string, a hair, I think. But it's white, white hair. Get off me. <laughs> so I was going into junior high. I was in the big league now, you know, junior high. 
Um, and that's where my new group of friends came from, was school. Um, because none of the kids in the neighborhood were really going to be my friends or my type of friends. So I had to make new friends. I had junior high. Now, here's a funny story. When I started junior high and started riding the bus, unbeknownst to me, totally unbeknownst to me, this person, this guy, and his friends were riding the bus. This person named Dale was riding the bus. Because now I'm going a different direction than I used to go for elementary school. Never had met these people before, right? Um, I didn't know it, but this person named Dale was sitting on the bus talking to his buddy when I got on the bus for the first day and said, whoa, who's the new girl? <laughs> Yeah, I had no idea. He said some other things about me that I won't share. Had to do with some part of my physique, but <laughs> I'm not sharing that. <laughs> yep, that's the first time he ever saw me was the first day I rode the bus to go to junior high. Mm -hmm. I had no clue. Of course, here I am. I'm the new kid. I haven't gone to school with this group of kids, even though we were the same school district, which is hard to understand. But where I lived before, my elementary school was way out in a small town, but it was still part of the same school district. And then the other elementary buildings were in town, in the, in the main town. But we never met each other you know, because we went to different elementaries in the same district. Does that you make sense? You follow that? So I'd never met these people before. Now that we're going to junior high, we all go to the same junior high, right? All the elementaries converge into the same junior high. Get how that happens? Okay. Yep. So that's the day that my husband <laughs> first met me or noticed me. Yeah. So then I made this whole new set of friends in junior high, right? And, um, I, hush. I moved the chair, the dog barks. <laughs> so it was just a whole different world, a whole different experience. And you know, when you're 12, 13, all that stuff that happens, puberty and boys and girls and this and that it all happens at that age right it all happens and um going to a junior high where you have classes that you move to you know back and forth you have gym like you know you go in the pool and all that kind of stuff it was just Wow, whole, whole new world there, right? Okay, so is it just me or did anybody else have to get a gym suit? Did anybody else have to buy a gym suit to go to gym class? I did. I remember we had to go to this little, like, dime store, drug store, hardware store in Lansing. And I had to get this ugly green striped on the top, solid on the bottom, one piece zip up like knit jumpsuit. I'm going to see if I can find a picture of that thing because, oh my gosh, it was horrid absolutely horrid. I mean, it's bad enough you have to go to gym and you have to undress, right, in front of people. <laughs> you have to undress. You have to get naked in front of a bunch of girls that you don't know and you got to undress and, oh, and then you got to wear this gym suit. Had to go downtown, had to go buy it. Then my mom had to put my name on the back of it in like, um, 
iron-on letters and stuff. Horrid. Just horrendous, you guys. Horrendous. I'm going to hunt for a picture of that. Years and years later, like when I was an adult and I went down to the historical museum. <laughs> oh, guess what was in one of the exhibits in the historical museum, you guys, was those gym suits. What was that about? I don't even know what that was about. Why did they do that to us? Why? And then, oh God, to make things even worse, even worse, was when you had to go swim, when you had swimming and you had to go in the pool. So you got to go shower, right? Now you're completely exposed and naked in front of all the girls, right? You got to shower. And then you had to wear their bathing suits. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Has anybody ever worn like a school bathing suit? Talk about horrible, horrible, those things. I mean, they were baggy in the legs, baggy in the butt. It was just like, it was the worst bathing suit, one piece, icky polyesterness in the world. Just, oh, horrible. Oh, the horror of some of the things that we had to go through, right? It was just horrible. Oh, that was my world, right? Um, anyhow, I had... I had started playing clarinet when I was in fifth grade. Our school offered band, and my mom had played clarinet. She had a clarinet still. She had hers. And I thought, well, I'm going to do band, and I'm going to play clarinet. So that was one of my saving graces when I got to middle school and junior high and stuff was because I could, I was in band, and I played clarinet. And that's where I met a good portion of my friends was in um, my band classes. Um, I do remember a science class pretty well, that I would sit in the science class every day. And this is still like junior high. We didn't have middle school. We went elementary, junior high, high school. There was no middle. It was elementary, junior high, high school. So I'm in junior high and I'm in some science class. And here's this boy. Here's this boy. Right? You know who it was, right? Certainly was. It was Mr. Dipple. <laughs> this boy in my science class. And we just, I mean, we would say hi. We would talk. I'm pretty sure, I'd have to ask him, but I'm pretty sure he was in the class when we went out to this pond and, like, gathered pond water to study, like, whatever was living in the water. And Pretty sure he was in that class. That was the one, but... There he was. Here's that boy that, you know, I rode the bus with. <laughs> yep. So, known him from way back in junior high. But what a time, you know. I remember, I remember having to take sex ed. Do you remember that? I had to take sex ed. Oh, boy, sex ed. Was that, do you remember it? Was it like the most embarrassing thing in the world? I mean, seriously. <laughs> Sorry, I had to restart. Camera decided to quit. It heard sex ed and it freaked out. <laughs> but do you remember it? Wasn't it horrid? I mean, it was horrid for me. How embarrassing. I know that part of our class, part of our sex ed class, they called it health, I believe. It was health. <laughs> but I think that part of it was with the boys. Started out with, like, everybody, all the kids, boys included. Started out that way. And then they would, they separated us out when it was time to talk about the feminine part. <laughs> you know? I was like, oh, man. That was so embarrassing. I mean, who wants to sit in some class with all these people and talk about all this, you know, stuff, right? It was ridiculous. But... You know, I'd already, I'd already received some sort of education at home, right? Not that my mom sat down and had the talk with us because, oh, she didn't. No, no, no. My mom did not. <laughs> now, 
let me just refresh your memory. My siblings and I were, there's five years between each of us. I'm the oldest, five years between me and my brother. So what my mom did, do you remember the big console stereo record players, you know? It was like a piece of furniture, you know, the nice, pretty decorative box with legs with the record player in it. We had one of those, sure did. Had one of those in our living room. And my mom called us all into the living room one day, all three of us, and said, I have something for you to listen to. <laughs> oh, no. It was Art Linkletter. Art Linkletter talking about the birds and the bees. Art Linkletter. Birds and bees. I was like, oh, man. Okay, so I'm already in junior high. I'm already hearing this in my health class. And my mom sits us all down with a record, the birds and the bees. Are you serious? Mom, mom, come on. What were you thinking? Most, most parents just sit their kids down and they have, you know, the talk. Or not the talk, it just happens kind of naturally, you know, as the kids are growing up and they start asking questions. And no, Art Linkletter was my teacher. <laughs> oh, you know, okay, if it's not bad enough, you're getting sex ed in school with the boys and the girls and all that, then you have to sit in your own living room and listen to it with your brother and your sister. I'm telling you, <laughs> gosh, I'm just telling you. I don't know why, why did this, thing, why did this happen? Why did these things happen? I just don't get it. Uh, I'm going to see if I can find a picture of one of those console record players, just in case you've never seen one. I'm sure there's younger people out there that have never seen a console record player. They were pretty snazzy, let me tell you what. <laughs> you know what? That thing sat in our living room for, oh man, most of my life even, as an adult even. It, it might still be around somewhere. I don't. Maybe they got rid of it finally, but... It just hung around forever, even when it didn't work anymore, you know, because it was furniture. <laughs> just, oh, the things, the things that happened, the tortures. Oh, my gosh, the tortures. <laughs> because, you know, that time, that 12, 13-year-old growing up time of life, that whole puberty era was, was, you know, you had to deal with that. Oh, my gosh. You know, and then, okay, this is going to get a little personal. When it was, you know, that time for me, you know, that time, <laughs> you know, who was there to help me? It wasn't my mom. Where was my mom? What was she doing? I don't know. It was my grandma. My grandma was the one that was there for me going, oh, honey, you know, it's like, thanks, grandma. <laughs> you know, <laughs> It's my grandma. <laughs> oh, God. Anyhow, enough about all of that, right? The gym suits, the nudity, the, oh man, <laughs> just, eh, it was something, it was something. It was about that time I started babysitting. I was babysitting, I babysit for my cousins, that's who I mainly would babysit for was my cousins. Um, I had lots of cousins that were younger than me because I was one of the older, you know, and so I had lots of younger cousins. Um. And I started earning money. That's when I first started making my own money, you know, babysitting. I could I could rack in some money babysitting. My one aunt and uncle, I'm pretty sure they were always testing me. They would test me. Like, I'd babysit. I'd go to their house. They lived like a mile from us. They actually lived, <laughs> this is funny, they lived um, just a couple houses down from Dale's house. Yeah kind of across the street from each other. So he knew them kind of growing up. They didn't chum around, don't don't get me wrong. They were not friends, but he knew my cousins. Um, but they would like, I think they were always testing me to see what I would do. Like they'd leave money laying around and things like that. What they didn't know was that, you know, after the kids would go to sleep, I'd get in the refrigerator and sample their wine. <laughs> I don't think they ever caught on to that. <laughs> Yeah, I'd have a little sample of their wine after the kids were sleeping. <laughs> but 
yeah, I started making some money. And then when I had some money in my pocket, I I remember the first babysitting job I had, all I wanted to do was go buy something at the store, at the mall. I wanted to go to the mall and spend my own money to buy something. And I did. And the first thing that I bought, and I'll see if I can find a picture of anything that was close to this, was a halter top a halter top, right? It tied, it tied at the neck and it tied, you know, in the back. I don't even remember how much it was. It didn't cost very much, but it was the first purchase I made with money I had earned babysitting. A halter top, why? I don't know, but it was the thing, I guess. I needed a halter top and it was the first thing I bought. And then, I think after that, I bought a tube top. Remember tube tops? Oh, Lord, tube tops. You know, it was all gathered and, you know, elastic. And then this tube top had a little little jacket. Not a jacket, but just another overshirt that went over it, you know, and tied right underneath your boobs, you know. Yeah. <laughs> Those were my first two purchases with my own money. A halter top and a tube top. I was styling, wasn't I? I was styling. I remember the halter top was red. It was red. And the tube top was like rainbow color. And I believe in a live one time, my daughter said, yeah, and then you gave it to me. (laughs) I believe my daughter, I kept that thing that long that I gave it to my daughter when she was older. What in the world am I doing? What am I doing with clothes that long? Why did I have that still to even give to her? I don't know. But yeah, she said I gave it to her. She had it for a while. I just, what, what, get rid of that stuff. Seriously. You know, I think my husband has a couple t-shirts he's had since high school. <laughs> just, I do. I think he still has a couple t-shirts he's had since high school. Why do we have that stuff? Well, I know why. I know why we we hang on to that stuff because you know those trends they come back they come around right it might take 30 or 40 years <laughs> but they come back and they come back right <laughs> so you hang on to those clothes long enough they're going to be in style again you just gotta wait just hang on to them don't get rid of it <laughs> oh you guys oh man that, that's my growing up that's those are some of the things i remember um We'll, we'll talk more about Mr. Dipple in a future video because there's some fun things to talk about there for sure. Um, so <laughs> just random thoughts of my adolescence. Is that what you call that time? Adolescence, probably. <laughs> but Comment below some of your fun things, some of the things that you remember, some of the horrors, or just some of the great stuff. Um, One of the most embarrassing moments I remember in junior high, I told you I played clarinet, right? And I know I was rushing, I was rushing up the stairs to get to my health class. (laughs) And I had my clarinet, you know, and some books or whatever I had. And I'm rushing to get up the stairs because it was a two-story building. Rushing up the stairs to get to health class. When I tripped, literally tripped going up the stairs. How does a person trip going up the stairs? I, I don't know how that happened, but I tripped and fell up the stairs. Yep. Banged the clarinet case, uh, actually damaged the clarinet, had to take it into the shop and have some repair done on it because I tripped up the stairs. Wow. And I'm not really typically like a clumsy person, but what's worse than tripping up the stairs, falling on your face on the stairs, and here's everybody, you know, like watching you, right? I feel like Kim from K Diamond Paints talking about falling in front of people. (laughs) I didn't do it very often, but that one, that's probably why I remember it so well, because that was one of the most embarrassing moments of my life, right? Embarrassing. 
the other thing I remember from junior high that I'll tell you real quick, and then I'm going to you know, get off here, was my charm bracelet. Did anybody else have a charm bracelet? You know, with silver charms, like I had like a little dog and I had, I remember I had a crate of oranges, you know, hung off the little bracelet, you know, your charms would dangle down. I remember, two of them I remember for sure, I had a crate of oranges that somebody bought me in Florida. It had actual orange, little oranges in it. It was kind of cool. And I had a beer stein that I got at Frankenmuth. I remember those two specifically. I mean, there were a lot of others. There was a lot of charms on it, right? And um, darn that stupid uh, gym class. You know, you got to get undressed. You got to change your clothes. You got to get in your jumpsuit. And you got to put all your stuff in the locker. Yeah, somebody stole my charm bracelet. Yep, stole my charm bracelet from the locker room during gym. I don't know how they stole it because we always had to have a lock and have everything locked up and stuff, but somebody stole it. All my charms I'd been collecting for years and years, family had purchased for me and things like that, was just gone. Yeah, well, that wasn't cool, right? But that's how it started. That's how it all started. Um, I did something naughty in junior high. I'll talk about that next time. The one, the one naughty thing I did was junior high. I'll talk about that in the next video, and then we'll move on to high school. <laughs> but, yeah, good times. Good, good times, right? All right. Um, I made some progress here. I'm getting some grass done. So um, I'll let you go now. And um, I'll talk to you in the next one. So I hope you're following along. Um, you guys, I'm going to, Maritza and Kara and I, we're all doing our videos on different days. So Kara, the principal painter, is going to put her video up on Tuesdays. I'm going to do mine on Wednesdays. And Maritz is going to do hers on Thursdays, okay? So watch for those, and I'll try to go back and link them every time when they put their videos up. I'll link it to mine so you can see all of them. So um, comment on our videos. What we're going to do is I think there will probably be like four videos for each of us, if I'm not mistaken. We're going to number our comments, each of us. So we're going to run these little giveaways like individually. So all of my comments on all my videos will get a number. And then at the end, I'll do a random number generator. And that number comment is the person who wins. So you got to comment. Comment on videos. Okay. Um, and I already told you, comment about, you know, some things that you remember from your junior high, embarrassing or, or just memorable things. They're going to ask you to comment something as well, and then they're each going to, on their own channels, they're going to give every comment a number, and then they're going to do a random number generator at the end for their winner. So that's how we're going to work the little prizes and the comments. The comments, numbered, you follow along, you get it? I hope so. So Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, look for a video from one of us on each of those days, comment on them, that kind of thing. I know that some of you are working on Melody. I haven't seen you post any pictures yet on Instagram, but it's hashtag Melodies of May. You can post pictures, and it does not have to be Melody. It can be whatever you're working on in May. We love to see what people are working on. It's so much fun to see what people are working on. Post some pictures on Instagram, hashtag Melodies of May. All right. So I think that's all the important information that you need. Um, as I'm sitting here watching two Orioles, no, three Orioles. <gasps> there are three Orioles outside on my Oreo feeder. They like grape jelly. You know that? You get these little feeders, you put grape jelly in them. And the Orioles go crazy over that stuff. It's like Oreo crack. <laughs> There's three of them out there tussling around, jockeying for position. It's crazy. Wow. 
They're so beautiful. If you've never seen a Baltimore Oriole, you guys, they are just gorgeous. Watch, watch my farm videos. You're going to see some. All right. I'm going to go now. Hit the like button, subscribe. Thank you for watching. Thank you for giving me a boost when I might feel down. Thank you for keeping me going when I feel like, eh, maybe I don't want to do this for a minute. I don't know. But thank you so much. Just thank you, thank you, thank you for being there. Thank you for everything that you do, okay? And uh, I'll see you in the next video because, you know, there's another one coming. <laughs> see you guys.